Today I'm going to be going over the Microsoft Word Part 1 PowerPoint. So what we're going to be looking at is kind of a basic introduction to Microsoft Word. So Microsoft Word is basically a very simple um, word processing or um, document processing application. It's Microsoft's version of it. Uh, so basically, we um, use this to do things like creating memos, typing letters, we can do resumes, newsletters, cover letters, um, all kinds of different documents. We can include pictures, um, things like that in there as well. And so as we go through this, we'll learn about all of those. So a couple basic things that we need to learn about Microsoft Word. Uh, when we open a new file, we're going to open Word by coming down here and clicking on the Start menu. Uh, you may see Word over here on what we call a tile on the right hand side. We can either click on that. We can scroll through our list of applications until we get down to the W's for Word. Or probably the simplest way is by clicking on the Start menu and then just typing Word. And then we can hit enter if a Word 2016 is highlighted or whatever version you're using. Or we can simply uh, hit enter or click. So when we're working in our different applications, we're going to see uh, this screen kind of come up on pretty much every application we work with in this, uh, particularly in this class. So we'll see over here a list of recent files that we've worked on, so we can use this to open a file. Down here at the bottom, we can click to open other documents. Or over here, we're going to see blank documents and then a list of templates. We'll talk about templates a little bit later. But for now, a blank document, we're just simply going to left click on it and it'll bring us to our blank document. So this is kind of what we see with all of our applications. We're going to see some characteristics that are going to carry through uh, with all of them. So one of the first things we're going to look at here is we're going to look at what we call the ribbon. So if we come back to the PowerPoint here, we can see that the ribbon is going to be this whole area around here. From there, it's broken down into a couple different um, sections. So uh, across the top here, we're going to have some of our information. So it's going to give us our file name and the application that we're in. We're always going to see that across our uh, title bar here. We're going to see number one here. So what's highlighted with the number one is going to identify our quick access toolbar. Um, and the quick access uh, toolbar allows us to quickly do some commands that we frequently use and it is customizable. Uh, the more common ones that you're going to be using is the save icon, so this little diskette, and the undo icon. Uh, these two will become your best friends. Uh, over to the right of where we see our title information. So that again, the name of the document that it's saved as, as well as application. In this case, we can tell it's Word, not only by the name that it tells us Word, but also by color. Then over here on the right side, we're going to get some basic window commands. Below that, everything uh, in the ribbon is going to be broken down into first what we call tabs. So that's number two. So the file tab is uh, now named depending on how recently you've used Microsoft Word. It's now been uh, being referred to as the backstage view. So the reason we call it the backstage view is simply because this is where we're going to see a lot of our behind the stage things going on. So again, if I come back to Word, go to File or what we now call the Backstage View, 
This is where we can get information about our document. We can inspect our document. We can mark it as final or read only. We can see how many pages are on here, word count, how long we've spent editing, things like that. We can create a new document, open, save, print, share it, export it. So we can export it to a PDF, for example, uh, or close the file or go to options. So these are kind of all things that don't directly affect the editing of our document, how our document's going to actually look. So that's kind of the reasoning behind calling it the backstage view. And then you'll see the home tab on all of the applications we're going to be using in this course. So Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. So those two will be consistent. And then the rest of these, uh, some of them you'll see on all of them, some of them you won't. So for example, insert's pretty common. Uh, design may be specific to one or two. Mailings as specific to Word only. So um, with the applications we're using, some of the tabs do change. And then all of the tabs, once you click on a tab, um, depending on the setting that we see here in number seven, um, the tabs can be broken down into what we call groups. So we click on a tab. So for example, we're on the home tab. I can identify it a, with the white box around it. So if you look very carefully here, we can see these very faint lines right here if you follow my cursor. And you'll see them here divided as we go along here. So what number four is showing us is the group names. So the purpose of identifying a group is to help you locate something that we were doing in uh, any of our applications. All of our applications are going to have the ribbon, the tabs, and the groups. So for example, if I asked you to go to the uh, select uh, three paragraphs and apply a bullet to it, if you don't know where to go for the bullet, I can give you an instruction that says go to the home tab in the paragraph group and then select bullet. Well now I can help narrow down what you're looking for. We know what tabs are so we can click on that. We know what groups are so the names are listed below it for each faint line. So this is the clipboard group. Everything between this line and this line is the font group. Everything between this line and this line is the paragraph group. So again, back to that example. If we look at taking the bullets, you don't know where they're at. I'll tell you it's in the home tab in the paragraph group. Well, now I know, oh, well, this is my paragraph group. So it's limited between this line and this line. So I can focus my attention in this area. And then my bullets are right here. So that's how the groups help us. We also use the groups for what we call a dialog box launcher. That's what number five is. So number five is a paragraph group dialog box launcher. And what that does is it basically expands the commands beyond what we see uh, on the tabs. So we can do more things with it. And some of the more advanced stuff that we're gonna learn about, such as tab stops, for example, we do through going through a paragraph group dialog box launcher, or we can expand what we can do in the font group. So we simply click that button and it pops open a box. So I can demonstrate that. And then this is my paragraph group dialog box. So we can see I have more options here that aren't displayed up here. So this gives us additional options. Tabs are down here. We'll get into tab stops later on in the course. But again, this is something we don't see as an option up here. Uh, number six here is going to allow us to basically raise up this list of commands. So that all we see is the tabs. Once we click on a tab, then it drops down the list of 
commands that are in that tab so it kind of frees up a little bit more space on your screen and then number seven is a command that allows us to change how the tabs function so six is kind of incorporated with seven so if I come actually up to my Word document here, if I drop down on it, we see the options to auto hide the ribbon. So if we click that, it would hide until we came over here to point to it. And then the ribbon would appear. We'd click on the tab and then the commands would appear. Show tabs hides the commands. Once we click on the tab, it reveals the commands. And then we can see down here if I pin it, then it leaves the commands there. If I click on it, it unpins it, and that's the show tabs command. So that's why I say those two are kind of tied together. That is basically this middle command. And then the bottom one is show tabs and commands. So that leaves it so that it's always visible on your screen. That's kind of my preference, but this is just kind of give you some options on how your screen looks. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is saving and opening uh, files. So I personally like to um, teach saving and opening together. So the purpose behind this is simply that if I teach you one way to save a file, then if it's not the same order to open a file, you might get confused if you're not familiar with it. So opening a file, you have to follow a specific pattern to be able to do it. However, saving, you have a little bit more flexibility. So if you learn how to save the same way you open, then you'll know how to do both. It's just changing one command. So what we're going to do is step number one is going to be file and we're going to do save as for the first time we save a document or any file or open if we're opening the file. Our second step that we're going to do is once we've clicked save as or open on the left side of the screen we're going to see the navigation pane. So on the left side, we're going to select the location of the file. And I'm going to put, for example, the desktop. So we've gone to File, we've clicked Save or Save As, it opens a Save As dialog box. On the far left hand side, we see um, our navigation pane. So we're going to select the location, so it could be desktop, it could be documents, it could be your USB flash drive, whatever you've got it saved on, or whatever you're opening. Our third step is in the middle. We're going to select the file name if we're opening or type the name we want to give um, right below it. So it's still in the middle, but right below it, um, you're going to see an option that says uh, for our file name, and we just simply provide what the file name is that we want to type. So I'll put saving. Now something that we want to follow when we're saving a document is that um, or any file is that we want to provide a specific name so we know what that file is related to. We don't want to save it as document 1, document 2, document 3 because a year down the road if we have a 
500 documents. I don't know what document one means. I'd have to open all 500 documents to figure out what I'm looking for. However, if I know this is my research paper for English um, 11, you know, 1000, then I could simply say um, rainforest research paper. Now I know what that, what that document is about. When I come back to it a year later and look through my list of files, I know, hey, I'm looking for my rain, rainforest research paper. There it is. I don't have to look through 500. So saving with a specific name is really important. And then our last step is going to be click the command. So that's going to be save or open. So if you fo follow these steps, you'll be able to save and open your documents in the same way. It's always important, especially when you're saving, that you know where you're saving your document to or any file to, so that when you go to open the file, for example, to submit it, you know where to find the file. Because if you can't find it, you can't email it, you can't submit it, you can't do anything with it if you don't know where it's at. So the next thing we're going to look at here while we're on this slide is we're going to look at uh, what we call file extensions. So a file extension is automatically placed um, in our files based on the application that we're using. So Word, PowerPoint, Excel. Uh, if you're saving a picture uh, from your phone or on your phone or if you're using a camera um, or if you're downloading a video or a movie or music all of it all of those have a file extension so these right here are our file extensions they're automatically assigned so in a word our file extension is going to be this one right here for word 2016 word 2010 um, so all of the more recent ones have a .docx attached to the file. .doc are going to be older versions. You can save a .doc in a newer version, a .docx. However, some things may not be compatible and vice versa. If you have a .docx and you save it as a .doc. So when you're saving, when we go to step three and we're typing in a name to save it, if it says to save the file as a .docx, so let's say it says save it as your name.docx, we do not type in there nathan.docx. This is incorrect. It automatically knows, because we're in Word, that it's a .docx. So all we type in step three is the actual name we want to apply. So I type this in step three. This part is automatically added to the end by Word when we click Save. So the next thing we're gonna look at are some shortcuts. I love using keyboards um, for my commands. To me, it speeds things up, makes them faster. So the less clicking I have to do on um, tabs and commands and the more I can do with a keyboard the better off I am. So the first one we're going to look at is copying, cutting, and pasting. So these are all three kind of done very frequently when you're um, using Word. These are going to be the ones on screen are going to be for uh, Macs. I will also put up here the ones for um, Windows. So Macs use a command button um, and Windows use the control button, CTRL. It's going to be located on the bottom part of your keyboard. So if we're cutting something, we are removing it from that spot in the text and we will be moving it to a new location in the text. 
if we're copying something, we're duplicating it. So we're making a copy of whatever we've selected. It's going to stay in that location and we're going to be placing it somewhere else. So cut is moving from one to the other. So we're moving houses. Copying is we're buying a second home. So we still have the original location. Now we have a second place. And then the pasting is the command is the command to actually execute kind of um, the moving of that information. So cut is C T R L plus X. So that means we push and hold control first and then just tap the letter X. And then you can let go of both. So push and hold control, tap X, let go of both. That will cut it. So you will see it disappear from uh, where you have it selected. You go down, you click where you want to place it, and then we paste it. So for a Windows computer, that is CTRL plus V, control V. Copying, same method, CTRL plus C copies the text we have selected or a picture or a table um, it can be anything within the document we move our insertion point so we use our mouse we click somewhere else so down here maybe and then push and hold control while you're holding control down tap the letter V so these are keyboard shortcuts don't really have to move your hand too much you don't have to click on a whole bunch of other places we can also right click to do this. So I'm going to actually demonstrate here. So you can see how I open a file. I go to File, Open. We're going to go to Browse for selecting our location. And we see on the left hand side, I told you my navigation pane. Um, I go to desktops and in this situation I have a whole bunch of folders here so again knowing the location of where you have stuff stored is important so I have created a folder for CPLT 1100 documents and I have a sample memo so now I've opened the file if I wanted to save it I'll go through that real quick file save as we're going to select our location, desktop, type the file name, save. You notice I did not apply the .docx. So to all employees, control X removes it. Come down to another spot, control V, it moves it to that location. I'm going to click my undo button in my quick access toolbar. So as many times as you click it, it now undoes each step that I did, and it's now back up here. Now I'm going to select it again. Control C for copy. You notice it didn't disappear, so I'm duplicating it. I'm moving to a new location, or I'm moving to a second location. Control V, it's still here, and it's also down here. So I have a duplicate of it. Our other option is to use our mouse. So I can select it, right click, cut, copy, paste. Our third option, home tab, clipboard group, cut, copy, paste. Um, when we are pasting, if I were to make this a larger font and a different font color. If I were to copy it, come down here. If I click the drop down arrow, anytime we see a drop down arrow for a command, that means there are additional selections available. So we see that there's three options. Keep source formatting keeps it exactly as the way we see it. So it's going to maintain the font, font color, font size, all of that stuff. 
merge formatting is going to look at the formatting around where we're placing it and it's going to modify it to that so we can see here it reduced the size it got rid of the color so it changed it to the formatting that's around it keep text only will keep the text and re uh, basically reset it back to default so in word our default is size 11 our size is right here on the home tab in the font group and then our font is going to be Calibri is default in Word as well. So both of these work by dropping down, scrolling through the list, or Times New Roman. We can just type it out. And then I can hit enter on it and it'll change it. Same thing with size. I can drop down or I can simply type the size that I want. All right, so the next thing we're going to look at is going to be our bold, italics, and underline options. So these are going to be on the home tab in the font group. Again, I can substitute all of these out. So all of these commands, these are going to be Apple. I can sub for control. So control B, control I, control. So bold, italics, and underline. Bold is going to make things look a little bit um, darker and thicker like we see in the example. Italics is going to slant our text a little bit. And underline is going to only underline the text that we have selected. It does not draw a line all the way across. To draw a line across, we do a bottom border. And that is going to be a paragraph group thing. So bottom borders, draw lines across the whole page. All right, so the next thing we look at is font size, font type, font color. So these are our technical terms. Um, we select or change them from the drop down menu. So again, drop down menu, drop down menu. So this right here is my font or my font type. This right here is my size, my font size, and then right here, right below it, as we just discussed, bold, italics, underline, and then this one's going to be very important as well. This is going to be our font color. So again, drop down. These drop down menus here, here, and here are highly important to working with these. So the next thing we're going to look at is going to be our alignment. So the purpose of alignment is to change basically the positioning of the text we have selected or paragraph or everything on the page to a different spot on our page. So we have four types of alignment. We have left align, right align, center, and justify. These are all located on our home tab. So we'll take a look at these real quick. So right now we've just been focusing up here in our font group. So my font color, font size, my actual font, bold, italics, underline. So now we're going to kind of switch over here to the paragraph group. So prior um, or a little while ago, I talked about drawing a 
bottom border, paragraph group, this last thing over here on the right hand side, if we drop down, we'll see bottom border. So I can select my bottom border and you can see it places it across the page. Uh, so for our alignment, again we have left, center, right, and justify. So I'll kind of show you what these do. Left is default. So everything, if you look here, is lined up smoothly to the left-hand side. So everything is lined up here on the left-hand side. So that is going to be our left alignment. So this is what we call the margin. That's this empty white space here. Empty white space on the right. We have empty white space on the top. And then um, eventually you'll run down here and you'll see you have some empty white space on the bottom. Those are our, our margins. We have four margins, top, left, center, and right. So if I select some text, let's take this for example, and I move it to center, it now centers in the document. So it takes each line of text and it centers it between the left and right margin. So it puts it in the middle. Right alignment puts the right side of the text on the right margin flush and then basically everything goes to the left. So the right side is flush with right alignment, left alignment, the left side is flush. So justify, and you can tell just by looking at the pictures exactly what these are doing. So justify kind of takes the best of both worlds. So it does a left and right um, alignment. Um, the best it can. So if we look here, this is the best example. If you notice where R is, it lines up almost at the six inch mark. Next is in front of it. Off is over here. So you can see it's staggered. So if I justify this whole thing, what we see now is the left side is flush and now the right side is flush. So it takes the text and it kind of stretches it out and makes it flush and then sets spacing in between to make the rest of it work. So for example here, this looks like a, a large gap for a space, but it's actually only one space. So the space in here is kind of stretched out a little bit here. You can tell the spacing is different there than it is here. And that's because it's stretching that to fit between the two margins. So the sides are flush and everything else fits in between. So it prioritizes the two margins. We typically see this used on publications, newspa uh, newspapers, magazines, newsletters, things like that, where we want to kind of clean up that look. But default is the left alignment. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is going to be indentations. So the tab key is a form of indenting our text. So the tab key um, will do a half inch indent or 0 0.5 inches. Uh, office reads in inches. So everything needs to be in the form of a decimal. So 1.5. It understands that 1.5 is 1.5 inches. You don't have to put the quotation marks for inches. It understands that that's what it is. So if we kind of look at indentations here, if I bring on my document, I hit tab. We can see right here it's got this little marker that indicates that it's indented a half inch. If we want to do some other types of indents, we can select our text. We can come over here to the Layout tab. And right here, we see it says Indent. It says Left and Right. And it shows us exactly what it's going to do. So I can just use this up and down arrow. And I can do a half inch for this whole paragraph. So it moves this whole paragraph in by a half inch or three tenths of an inch. And then I can do the same thing on the right side. I can pull that right side inwards. 
um, three tenths of an inch. So use the up arrow, three tenths, it's now pulled in. I can set these to half inches to be more dramatic, so you can see a little bit better. But something like this is actually used uh, when we're properly quoting text in a research paper or any type of paper that we're typing. And we're actually going to be quoting like a whole paragraph from that document. Um, you're actually supposed to do an indent such as this for that quotation. Um, so this is when that can become handy. So this is the proper way to do an indent. However, when we hit tab, it is a half inch indent on the left side. If you wanted to a right indent, you can do it here. Or on the home tab, we can go to the paragraph group dialog box launcher. So I'll undo my indents here. and then select my text again. Always important to make sure you're selecting your text first when you're modifying. It should default here to indents and paragraphs unless you were on the line and page breaks before. Come down to the middle and what do we see? Right here. We're gonna see indents. So we're gonna see indents here and then we see left, right, and then we just simply select. So once our text, make sure our text is selected, we can do left and we can see the preview going on here. Right, click OK, and we get the same results. So indents, we can go to layout or the home tab and we'll get the same result out of it. So it is in the paragraph group on the home tab and again we're selecting that dialog box launcher for that or we can go to the layout tab and then we'll see indents left and right. And those are going to be our two ways that we can work with indents. So the next thing we're going to look at is going to be our spacing within our document. So this is going to be called line spacing. So the first thing we're going to look at here is line spacing. We can see here we're on the home tab. You look very carefully down here we can faintly make out that we're in the paragraph group. And then in the paragraph group, again, focusing right here, we have that drop down arrow. That's very important. So we're going to highlight the text that we want to modify. Home tab. In the paragraph, paragraph group, we're going to select this drop down arrow and then we're going to see our line spacing. So, line spacing is the spacing between the lines. So, it deals specifically within the paragraph itself. So, one is single spacing, one and a half is default spacing. It is not single space default, it is 1.15 that is default. Then we have one and a half spacing, two is double, two and a half, and then triple spacing. So typically, you're either gonna leave it as default, you're gonna use one or single, or you're gonna use two for double. Those are the most common types of spacing for our line spacing. So again, that's between the lines of text. So the next thing we're going to look at is going to be our paragraph spacing. So paragraph spacing is the spacing between our paragraphs. So this space here, this space right here, this space right here, this space right here, between my paragraphs. Line spacing 
is all of this stuff in between those. It deals with the lines themselves. So what we're looking at here is again several ways we can do this. We can go to the same icon on the home tab in the paragraph group, grab that arrow, we're going to click on that arrow, and then before down here it says add spacing before or remove spacing after. So keywords for paragraph spacing are before and after. If you see the word spacing and then before, it is paragraph spacing. If you see spacing and after, it is paragraph spacing. Another way to identify between line and paragraph is line will say either one, two, or three, or single, double, um, default, triple. Usually it says single, double, triple um, if you see it. So that's one way to identify it. But uh, paragraph spacing is also going to be identified in what we call points. It's the same way that we identify our font size. Our font size are identified by points, so it's 11 points. You'll see the same thing for paragraph spacing. So it's going to say um, add 8 points of spacing after the first paragraph. So keys, eight points, spacing. So now I know I'm here, that's identified that. Eight points should automatically trigger at or before or after, and then the word after. So now I know I'm in spacing. I know it's after, which tells me it is paragraph spacing, so I ignore all of this, and it tells me how many points. Now adding spacing before here just does that, it adds spacing. So if we have a specific amount of spacing that we want to do, we do need to go to a uh, specific location. And again, we've actually already been there. So our location is going to be on the Layout tab. And then you're going to see right beside indents, you're going to see the option. It's going to say spacing. And guess what? It's going to have our magic words. We're going to see before and after. And then we simply select the size. And it even tells us 8 points, 16 points, and it has a drop down. So it gives us all of our clues, spacing, before, and how much it is, and it's all right there in front of us when we click that Layout tab. It's almost right in the middle when you look at it. So we'll take a peek at that. <clears throat> so I'm going to be dramatic again for this. Select my text, Layout, and bam, my spacing, before, after we can see it's already laid out in points. So if I want to do my spacing after, watch this. You see that spacing? See that spacing going on right here? All of this has grown. So if I go back to it and reduce it, so you can see it's falling into my circle where my spacing was. So now I'm reducing that spacing after this paragraph that I had selected. So that's simply what we do. So we do it to add visual appeal. If we need some extra spacing between something to make it more noticeable, more visually appealing, that's what we use it for. All right, so we've already kind of briefly talked about bullets, so we know that bullets are going to be in our paragraph group. And then we've already seen that the bullets are simply the bullet icon like this. 
So we would select our text that's in the paragraph. We click that drop down uh, menu. So again, we're looking for that arrow. That's going to pull up this list. Default is this one right here. So if it does not tell you a specific type of bullet, just leave it as default. Other than that, you can change bullet styles. Uh, these are the basic ones. We can come down here to define new bullet if we want to really get fancy. And then we can actually use a picture of our own or something like that as a bullet. So you can get really advanced into it. We don't really deal with that in this course. Just know that you can do the drop down list and we can select from one of these bullets. These are our defaults. Um, the same thing goes for a numbered list. So numbered list is going to be same location. So we're just going to be um, the paragraph group. And then you're just going to see an icon that's going to be like one, two, three. It's the very next one beside um, this bullet one. So this is first, this is second. Simply do the drop down arrow and then you're going to see different formats of your um, numbering that you can do. Um, one additional thing that we can do with uh, numbers and bullets as well is we'll take this list for example if I come over here so paragraph group bullets numbers I click bullets it formats it to bullets if I want to change if I want this to kind of fall underneath this list but not be like its own if I hit tab it adds that to it so I can select each one of these and it's like a subcategory of this main one. If you want to take this back, we can come up here. So um, to, the le to the right, still on that first row, we have this back arrow and this forward arrow that look like they're in paragraphs. That's our increase indent and decrease indent. So again, remember when we hit the tab key, we're creating an indent. So with this, I can decrease it, so pull it back, or increase it, push it forward. So that's how we can correct, let's say we accidentally hit it too far, so I hit it twice and only meant to hit it once, I can use that. Um, so that's another way to correct. Um, so just one additional side note here uh, before we wrap things up. Right here in the paragraph group, this is a non-formatting paragraph marker. Um, what it means is that you can see different formattings that have been applied to your uh, document. So tabs, spaces, every time that you hit enter, you are creating a new paragraph in Word. So see here, every time I hit enter, I get a new paragraph symbol. If you're only doing, if you just want to go to the next line, we do shift, push and hold shift, and then hit the enter key. And we see we get this icon, so that just forces it to create a new line. So if you ever get stuck somewhere, something doesn't seem to be working right, I can show you a perfect example. Um, coming back to this list, <clears throat> if I do shift enter, on all of these you'll see I don't have the paragraph markers anymore I have like the little enter symbol so if I try to come here and format that it bullets each paragraph it doesn't bullet a line so if you get stuck and you get something like this you're like this doesn't look right Turn this show hide, it's called the show hide button. Um, look for things like this. So if you see this symbol, you hit shift enter or you copied and pasted something. Just backspace, delete it out, hit enter. 
and it'll solve it immediately. So in this situation, backspace, enter, because it was already formatted to be a bullet, and now recognizes it because it is a paragraph and not a new line. So that should be a helpful tip for you. And then if you don't want to look at all these marks, I use these a lot for editing. Click it, turn it off, you're back to your normal screen. So that show hide button is extremely useful. So yeah, that's going to cover all of our information for Word. So last page, just through a, a quick review, um, you should be able to create a Word document. So we go to File and either New or Open. So if it's a new document, File, New, Blank Document. You should be able to save. So File, Save As, select our location. Um, in the middle, um, we're going to middle, kind of near the bottom where it says File Name. We're going to type in a file name and we're going to click Save. Uh, distinction between different file types and when to use them they're automatically applied um, for the different file types and then a .docx would identify a word file type we'll talk about some of the other ones later but um, .pptx would be a powerpoint .xlsx would be an excel um, spreadsheet and we'll go through all of those as we progress um, we recognize text within a paragraph so we can tell by the spacing between it. We can turn on the show hide and see the paragraph marker. Those are several ways. Um, we go to to create italic bold and underline. We select our text again. It's the home tab. We're going to be in that font group and then we click the B, I, or U. Uh, are you able or how do you change the font size? The font and the color of the font. So in this one, the font size, again, we're in that font group on the Home tab. You should see the number. You click that drop down arrow, or you can simply click in there and type. Same thing with the font and the font color. I'll draw this one out, because it is the most commonly missed one. It is the letter A, with the coloring underneath it, and the drop down arrow font color alignment is going to be in a paragraph group so again we have the four types of alignment we have uh, left alignment center alignment right alignment and justify how do you use the tab key on the keyboard you click in front of the uh, paragraph or the line that you want to indent and then you hit the tab key, it is on the left side of the keyboard. Are you able to change the line spacing of text? So we simply select the text, the paragraph group, and we should see that little icon. So it looks like this. You can have some arrows like that. And then we click that drop down arrow for more options. And then it's the 1.15, 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 2, 2.5, or 3. That is the line spacing. Uh, can you create and format numbered and bulleted list? Again, paragraph group, and it's either those dots or the numbers if you're doing bullets or numbers. Again, it's important to remember we always select our text first before we do any of this formatting because we have to tell it what we want to format. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and let me know. And I hope this um, lecture video was um, informative for you.